So folks, I hope you are all doing well. Keith here from Command the Hoop Celtic. If this is your first time viewing the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. A thumbs up or a comment below, be appreciate. Look where we are. We're in Glasgow International, of all places. Back to Dublin in a few hours. We're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about this Netherlands midfielder we're linked with. We're going to talk about Peter Lawwell. And we're also going to talk about Yogi Kuryabashi as well. Let's, let's kick it off. So we've been linked with an attacking midfielder. Preferably left winger. His name is Sayad Hamluki. Now, he comes from a Bosnian and here to go with background. But he was born in the Netherlands, so he can he can be capped from the Netherlands if he wants to be. He's 22 years of age. He scored nine goals in the Polish league so far this season. Four assists. Left footer, six foot two. The more we hear about the speculation of these players, I'm starting to feel like we're getting desperate because we have a guy on loan which I've dealt with for a long time, Mikey Johnson, and he's doing well in the in the Portuguese league. Why should we go in for a lad that's 22 years of age playing in the Polish league? The Polish league, no disrespect to our Polish subscribers, but come on, it's worse than the Scottish league. It's worse than the Irish league, for God's sake, at this rate. Why should we go for a lad that I know fuck all about, that no one, anyone knows fuck all about? It could be a gem, it could be a, a baller, it could be absolute class, but no, it's enough for me. Like, we were linked with attacking midfielder from Cairo the other day, valued at 5 million. Now we're linked with a guy from the Polish League that's valued at 2 million. No, definitely not for me. So, Hamlikic, no, definitely not. Definitely not. I do apologise if I pronounced that wrong as well. A couple of whiskeys happens, that's what happens. So, let's talk about Peter Lawwell. He's been appointed from the 1st of January as the chairman, non-executive chairman of Glasgow Celtic. This is a guy that has been at the club from what? 17 year term, he won 29 trophies. A person that a lot of people scrutinated because he didn't have that big engagement as he's so-called a Celtic fan. Proper businessman, look at Peter Lawwell was wanted by many clubs in England and he's tender at Celtic. You know, at one point Arsenal were offering four times the salary to get him to the Emirates as a chief executive and I think he is a good chief executive but I just feel like you know job for the boys as Roy Keane says it's a job for the boys and Ian Banker stepping down Michael Nixon is the CEO and we got this guy coming in Peter Lawwell as we all know everyone's been saying it for a long time Peter Lawwell's pulling the strings of the Glasgow Celtic he probably is and look at he done a good job I found as a chief executive, you know, he balanced the books well, but at the same time, over that season, which was a disaster, COVID season, he didn't engage with the fans. I felt like he put the blame on the fans too much, and for a set of fans that are the best fans in the world, the voice their opinion on social media, he just didn't give that clarity, didn't give that insurance. He stuck by Neil Lennon, and okay, Lenny is a legend, but Neil Lennon, that season was an absolute disaster. And Peter Lawwell lost a lot of respect from the fans. So um, for him to come in, I feel like, you know, a non-executive decision is it's disgusting because when it comes down to the AGMs, if you can correct me or not in the comments, that he will answer the questions. He will answer these Article 11, Article 12 questions because Peter Lawwell is behind this whole Celtic old firm brand. I mean, we don't, we don't want that. We honestly don't want that. You know, like, they died in 2012, and it makes me sick that people still call them Rangers All Firm. Like, these are people that celebrated 2012, Valentine's Day 2012, cherry and ice cream, and they're calling them All Firm. Please, just get ripped to yourselves, please, just do it. But let's go on to Yogi Karabashi. Now, this is a guy that we're getting from Japan. We signed from Vise Kobe. You know, like he's over six foot, centre back, enthusiastic. He arrived in Glasgow today, met with his, his teammates in Lennox Town, got the number 18 short. I'm looking forward to seeing this guy. It means his competition for Carter Vickers, even though we all love Carter Vickers, Starfelt, Stephen Welch, and Maurice Yans. I, as I said many times on this channel, and I'll repeat like a parrot again, I can see Stephen Welch going somewhere else. And that's what's going to happen. I think Celtic will start to get more players in this window. Mark my words, I think it's going to be another three players. Three more players. I think there's going to be another striker because of the whole Yakimak stuff. 
I think we need another, we need another right back because of Jovanovic. I said Alistair Johnson many times. I think we need that right back in there. I think look okay, to be honest with you, right now, if you said to me Alistair Johnson and Anthony Ralston, Anthony Ralston all day gets the club, he knows it, but Alistair Johnson has to make a point and fight for the shorts. Simple as that. So um, that's really it for me. Drunk talk, pub talk, pish talk, as you want to say. Do subscribe. Speak to us all soon. God bless. Hell, hell. Take care.